Good afternoon, you two pipe smokers. Let me tell you something. It's not fit for man or beast out here. Unbelievable. It is hot. Jeep thermometer says 100. And I believe it. Hope everybody's doing something cool or stay inside and do nothing. It is bad. Drink plenty of liquids, I'll tell you that. But anyway, I'm going to continue the car talk from this morning, or the first video I did. And you know, I've been in the automotive business since I was 16, transmissions primarily. I'm now 58, so what do we got, 42 years in the transmission business. And people laugh at me when I say this, but I, the death of the car is on the horizon. And the reason I say that is because of costs. And a lot of it's our government's fault. And I'll explain why in a minute. But the, the, the first problem we have is nobody's coming in, not nobody, uh, but a small number is coming into the automotive field. You know, when I go to the transmission seminars and I belong to a couple of tech groups that I'm heavily involved in, and most, of course, there's exceptions, but everyone is 50 and up, it appears. There's some guys still working in their 80s that own a shop rebuilding their transmissions. And, and across the board, it's the same complaint. They can't find help. Now, I'm in need of a guy, because uh, my guy that's been with me a long time is moving out of the area. He's moving to Michigan. And he's been with me over 10 years. So I've been trying to find a replacement, and I finally got a guy that looks like he may work out. But you cannot find younger people that want to do this. So that's going to be a major problem, because um, the cars are getting more sophisticated. And, you know, years ago, I mean, when I say years ago, probably 15, 20 years ago, you sort of were frowned upon if you were told somebody a mechanic. Because it's like being a truck driver, basically. It, you, you went that route because you didn't have the smarts or it was perceived as a uh, lower class of job type of thing. Fortunately, transmission rebuilding is a specialty. And that, it, I mean, we're working on basically the hardest part of the vehicle. So we had a little more respect than a regular mechanic, in my observation. <clears throat> but that being said, so now if you take away the problem of finding help, and it's not only automotive, by the way, it's uh, plumbers, electricians, they all have the same complaint, they can't find good help. And automotive finally has come into its, probably its best years where you really need to know a lot. I mean, you, know, you need to know about computers. Um, it's gotten very sophisticated, electronics. 
But we're going to take away the equation of finding good help out of the picture for a second. And let's say magically we could fix that. The other problem is people aren't going to be able to afford the repairs on the newer cars. I mean, right now with some of the newer transmissions, the 8 and 10 speeds, which all manufacturers are having problems with, by the way. You're looking at a six to $8,000 bill. And that's in a regular GM and Chrysler product right now. If you go to the European side, it gets higher than that. So right now, the average repair ticket on a older, let's say up to six speed transmission in my area, is anywhere between two and three thousand dollars. And you meet opposition for that money. In my shop, I'm a reasonable, in my view, uh, repair shop. And I have cars that when they're finished, they sit for two to three weeks sometimes, but people can't pick them up. Some of them make payments over time, and I keep the car. Uh, they just don't have the money. So where are they going to find the money when it's six to eight thousand dollars or more? I mean, a lot of these tires on the vehicles, which that's a simple component. They're going to 18 inch, 20 inch, 21 inch tires. You're looking a thousand dollars for a set of tires. And being all wheel drive, they should all be changed at once. You shouldn't just do two. And that's why it's important to rotate tires, by the way, on all-wheel drive vehicles so they wear evenly. But the automotive world has priced the cars out of this universe. Uh, they're ridiculous. I mean, a new pickup truck is seventy to eighty thousand dollars for a pickup truck. I mean, granted, they're beautiful, and it's, that's a lot of money. And this is all because, and they're not lasting, I mean, they're lasting longer because machining and technology has gotten better. But people drive a lot more than they ever did, and a lot of people don't realize how much they drive. I mean, we do cars always, always over 100,000 without a problem. 200,000 miles is not uncommon. But this is all coming about because of the government, and the reason that's happening is because of the cafe standards. The manufacturers can't meet the cafe standards, they get penalized. So in order to do that, they have to reinvent themselves, and they're changing the way the transmission operates a lot of times with software, being a computer controlled. And if any of you are driving newer vehicles, you can try this for yourself and you realize what I'm talking about. If you go in a hilly area, wherever you live, and you try to drive that truck up that uh, truck or car, whatever it is, at a light throttle, doing 35 miles an hour, you notice the car bogs down because they shift into the higher ranges very quickly. And that puts a tremendous load on the transmission. And also, the, the lock-up torque converters, which locks the motor to the transmission, they're having those lock up earlier and earlier. Because the earlier they have those come on, the more fuel mileage you'll get. So I know this gets a little technical, but just pay attention next time you drive. It has to be a newer vehicle, like 2012 and up. 
the newer, the worse it is. Well, over time, especially on a heavy truck, that torque converter cannot survive. I just did a, this week we did a 2014 F-150. Happened to be the King Ranch model, which I happen to be a fan of. Beautiful leather inside, but nonetheless, torque converter was completely shot. Transmission shifted good. So we pulled it out to change the torque converter and the fluid was terrible. I had to clean out the transmission to get all the metal out of it. And I did that. We replaced the torque converter, we flushed the cooler. That repair bill was $2,400. But the more important point is, I got one of the last torque converters right now in the country. The torque converter is on national back order. When you get a part that's on national back order, that's a red flag. And the reason it's on national back order because they're going bad so often. And they're going bad because they're having them come on too early. And that's all to meet the government standards so they don't get penalized. So I'm going to leave it at that right now. And I'll pick up where I left off on another video. In the meantime, stay cool. And I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.